In this video, we'll do a quick dive on vector stores or vector databases or vector embeddings. If you've ever heard of the term embeddings or word embeddings or wondered what that section on OpenAI's website labeled embeddings is all about, then this video is for you. If you've never heard of vector stores or vector embeddings, then that's okay because you've probably interacted with them without even knowing it. Some common consumer facing applications powered by vector stores would be, for example, one anomaly detection related to your bank account, two recommendations for content on streaming platforms, three automated content moderation on social media. There are only two things you need to understand in order to follow along with this video. The first thing is you need to understand what a vector is. The second thing is you need to understand what a dot product is. A vector is a multi-dimensional value. This is in contrast to a one-dimensional value, which is sometimes referred to as a scalar. If you were to ask me, what's my age again? I might say 33, and that would be an acceptable response. On the other hand, let's say you asked me, how would you shoot this basketball so that it goes inside the hoop? I might answer and say, I would throw it at this speed, in this direction, and at this angle. You see how there are multiple dimensions associated with the answer to the second question? This is what vectors represent. Vectors are multidimensional values. You can represent many things with vectors. For example, let's represent someone's personality with a vector. We'll use a four-dimensional vector and make the first number how sociable they are, the second how talkative they are, the third, how trusting they are, and the fourth, how confident they are. Hopefully you have a good feel of what a vector is. A dot product is a mathematical formula, just like mx plus b equals y or a squared plus b squared equals c squared, except that it takes two vectors and spits out a value that tells you how similar or different the two vectors are. The more positive the output of the dot product, the more similar the two vectors are considered to be. The more negative the output of the dot product, the more opposite they are considered to be. If the dot product outputs a value of zero, that means that the two vectors are orthogonal or unrelated or neither similar nor different. In this demo, we'll be using Python and an embedding model from OpenAI. ChatGPT and GPT-4 are the open AI models most people are very familiar with, but other models offered by open AI include DALI, which is a model that receives text and spits out images related to said text, Whisper, a model that receives audio and spits out transcriptions of what's being said in the audio, and Text Embedding Ada 002. That's what we'll be using. That's the embedding model that will receive text and spit out a 1,536 dimensional vector. I looked into what the dimensions of these output vectors mean, but didn't find anything. If anyone knows, please let me know. I'm guessing the first dimension means how Western or Eastern the source text is. I'm guessing the second dimension means how scientific or unscientific the source text is. I'm guessing the third dimension means how masculine or feminine the source text is. I don't know, I'm speculating. Hopefully that gives a gist of what's happening when a source text is passed through these embedding models and generated or turned into a 1,536 dimensional vector. Let's send the text tiger to text embedding A to 002 and see what we get back. Here is the 1,536 dimensional vector we were talking about. Now let's send the text cat to text embedding ADA 002 and see what we get back. Right? Another 1,536 dimensional vector. It's hard to tell these vectors apart, but they are different. Now let's send the text fish to text embedding ADA 002. Right? Another one of these huge vectors. Okay, here is where the dot product comes in. 
Let's calculate the dot product of vectors 1 and 2, a.k.a. tiger and cat, and compare it against the dot product of the vectors 1 and 3, a.k.a. tiger and fish. I predict tiger and cat will score higher because they're both of the feline, I don't know if that's the right term, family, right? A tiger and a cat seem to me to be more similar than a tiger and a fish. But let's see what text embedding ADA002 has to say about that. So according to text embedding ADA002, tiger and fish are more similar than tiger and cat. Maybe that has something to do with cat being a domesticated animal. I don't know. Let's test out Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Monday and Tuesday are going to score higher than Monday and Wednesday because Monday and Tuesday are closer together temporally, right? Let's see if I'm correct. So in this case, I was correct. Monday and Tuesday scores slightly higher than Monday and Wednesday in similarity. Now you see why these vectors are sometimes referred to as embeddings. It's because the models that generate these vectors embed notions of meaning into them. I couldn't come up with a way of visualizing 1,536 dimensions, but here is a visualization of a collection of three-dimensional vector embeddings. If we look at this region of the vector cloud or vector space, let's see what these points represent. Graph, configuration, filter, graphics, vector, <laughs> compression. I mean, I guess these are like IT technologies. I don't know. Let's come over here. Let's see what the concepts in this part of the vector space say. Tanker, shortwave, precipitation, runways, GRT, rainfall. Eh, maybe like stuff related to like water and military equipment. I don't know. Or uh, let's come over here and see what it says. Minorities, autonomy, republics, provinces, territories, reforms. So this is like political concepts maybe. So that is vector embeddings, word embeddings, the groundwork of vector stores and vector databases.